you are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today, I am interviewed by another listener to the uh, to the show. I welcome in Andrew Duggar. But before I do that, Michael Bolton. Let's get to it. To it. Almost forgot. Andrew, welcome to the show. How are you doing, Josh? Good, uh, I'm good. It's good to have you on. Good to have you doing this uh, interview. We had one last week with uh, with Jessica, and now you're coming in as, as the second interview show here, uh, hitting on some different questions for what you got. Whatever you want to ask me, so Andrew, the floor is yours. All righty. Well, uh, I did go to Reddit a little bit and get some input from other listeners. So uh, on the first one here, uh, I know I personally have one, but uh, what would be your biggest bonehead move you've made in your fantasy career, whether it be um, a draft position, a pickup, a trade you've made? along those lines um oh there's been there's been lots of them um i i vaguely remember at the the peak of lin sanity that i added jeremy lin and then dropped him after two games um and then yeah obviously he went bananas for the next month or, or six weeks and someone else scooped him up immediately so i thought okay this is cool we'll just we'll stream it through and we'll see what uh We'll see what happens. And then I thought, oh, well, this isn't going to last. We'll so add someone else here. I can't remember who I added in for Lynn in that that case. It obviously wasn't someone that was playing anywhere near at that level. But I'm pretty sure that's going to be one of the worst moves. There's always those sort of ones. I think also there was one maybe at the beginning when Draymond Green first started for the Warriors that he was on waiver wires everywhere. And then I added him and then maybe dropped him out to stream someone else in. And then, of course, he became a, a fantasy star throughout the rest of that season. Yes, yeah, I know um, I had my fair share. I may or may not have drafted Monte Ellis first round in 2014. Wow, so. okay. <laughs> yeah, first year playing fantasy. Um, haven't heard the end of those jokes, that's for sure. I've, I, I'm sure there's been plenty of draft ones that I've made. I can't really remember any of those ones uh, per se, but yeah, more the wave wire ones. <laughs> all right, um, so obviously we all know you analyze NBA. If you could cover any other sport or any other league, uh, what would that be? What would you prefer? Uh, I would definitely cover the the AFL, which is the Australian Football League. That's uh, you know something that I've grown up with here, watching for the last yeah you know, thirty five, thirty six years of, of my life, and something that I, that I go to in person yeah, every week. Well, I would if there was uh, if they were allowing fans in, because AFL season set to start uh, tonight. By the time we're recording this. Um, but they're not having any fans in the arena, so that was what that is what I would cover. Um, who knows? Maybe I will cover that at some point. But that is the other sport that I would look to do. Awesome! Awesome! So with uh, you know the season's on suspension, everyone's getting a little antsy, not knowing what's going on. They're uh, looking forward to next season already. Uh, but the question was, how essential do you find like mock drafting, or do you find specific analytics that you look at that are more beneficial? You got to look at. At all of it, um, yeah. Mock drafts give, yeah, give some value, I think. And obviously, I do a, a lot of mock drafts on this show, and we do auction drafts and snake drafts, and I think that's really important. But we all know that every draft, there's no drafts that are the same. So weird stuff is going to happen, especially when you get into auction drafting. But it's more having a, an idea of like this is more of a trend rather than well, I'm definitely going to be able to get this player at pick sixty because you're never going to work like that. It's like, what sort of positions are going to be available in these rounds? Who are my five, six guys that I'm looking for in these next two to three picks that I've got? And having that sort of an area. So if one guy goes 30 spots higher than you expected, it doesn't screw your whole draft over and you start panicking. Well, that's annoying because I would have wanted that guy. But I've got a couple of other options or ways that I can go here. I do, of course, do all the projections and all most of my all of my draft decisions are based on that sort of stuff as well as you know, upside <laughs> type guys towards the end of drafts but your know, mock drafts i think are, are really important but it, it is becomes more important like i know people are doing mock drafts now for next season i don't find any value in that sorry to the people that are doing it i know you're looking for ways to pass the time because you know free agency trade so much stuff is going to happen in that time and i don't think there's going to be really anything indicative uh in doing mock drafts until we get initial site provider rankings come out and we know where the team sit Great. So you'd mentioned you 
you started playing around 2013 basketball wise. Uh, have you noticed over the years um, different downfalls in fantasy managers, whether it's they have like an emotional draw to a certain player, whether they just start overvaluing their player out the roof, um, something along that. I, I think that it's probably tempered a little bit more now, but it did used to be very back, you know, five years ago, very much there was that uh, pull towards a particular player or a particular team. I don't see that quite as often anymore um, where players would, you know, oh man, Kobe's my favorite player, so I'm going to take him in round two just because it's Kobe, even though it's not going to hurt your team, or it's, or even though it might hurt your team back, you know, when he's returning from his Achilles injury. Yeah, it's a similar thing what happened with Derek Rose, who wasn't a good fantasy player most of his career, and he'd go in round three because he was their favorite player. I think we're seeing less and less of that now. It still happens a little bit, and it might cause uh, a rounds by either way but I haven't seen as much of that I'm just taking and maybe it's because the leagues I'm play, playing are, are more seasoned players and it probably happens a lot more in uh, in beginner type leagues but I'm seeing less and less of that sort of thing of, of grabbing a player who doesn't make any sense for fantasy just because they play for your favorite team all right uh, have you done any updates to your top five ship bloke list um, I don't I don't I wish I had a physical ship bloke list. I haven't done any updates to it. There's nothing, nothing's really, and people will say, Hey, is Rudy Gobert on your ship bloke list? Um, I don't think he is. Like it, it was a pretty dick move to, to do, but yeah, to be a ship bloke, I need a repeated pattern of behavior. Bobby Portis, the Morris twins, like that, that's a repeat, repeated pattern of ship bloke behavior. Not one stupid decision that the Gobert made that I don't think had any ill intent towards it. Uh, versus just a, a dumb mistake that he didn't think about. So I think most of the guys who are on that list, Rondos and Morrises and and Portises, they're all pretty uh, fairly fairly well entrenched there. Pretty much have put themselves on that list for the foreseeable future. Then yeah, they're going to need to do quite a bit to get off it. To be honest. <laughs> Um, so you have a lot of sound bites with players. Have you ever given yourself a sound bite? Uh, if not, do you have an idea of what it may be? I haven't, but I did see this question on Reddit. So here you go. When people get too chummy with me, I like to call them by the wrong name to let them know I don't really care about Incredible. them. Yep, there you go. That's uh, cause I, I, I did see that thing that you put up on Reddit. You didn't link it to me, but I was just browsing Reddit and I saw that pop up there and I saw that question. I went, he's going to ask me this. So I'm going to have something prepared and there you go. Absolutely. It's it was one of those that I was like, this has to get done, it has to be asked. You know, it's a big part of the show in general. We all love it. So um, let's see here. Uh with your working in analytics with uh, basketball monster, you're doing all this data. Um, I myself am a current college student at the University of Kentucky looking to get into analytics, sports analytics, all those kind of things. Uh do you have any advice on types of software that you all use that you find more keen or just any um, you know, opportunities to dive into the, the field like that we don't use any specific software like we all our stuff is done back end through our website in terms of um you know regression uh types of stuff in terms of statistical progressions and you know where how we're looking at the the projections and the numbers and how they move based on you know, inputs and things like that uh i don't handle those algorithms i you know, look at those things and make manual adjustments to the projections and try and balance them that way and then it's tied into the mathematical formulas um, if you are looking to get more into the analytics side of things, there are a bunch of guys on, on Twitter who I think are, are really good follows to have a look at Jacob Goldstein's one of those. He's really open with what they do as well. Uh, Kostya Medv uh, Medvedev, I think his name is another guy who's really open about the stuff that, that he does, uh, analytics wise. There's a ton of those people on Twitter that you can find out, talk to, get into those discussions and, and see. I think a lot of them use a program, uh, R to do that sort of stuff. Um, okay. but I, I, I honestly have no you know, sort of statistical training in, in using those programs or doing that statistical analysis. I did you know, basic stats, uh, throughout uni and have it, had an interest in it for a long time, and, but not to that you know, massively high level. I understand it. a bit of those things like, you know, regression formulas and Bayesian type of things. I have a bit of an understanding of it, but we don't, we don't use huge, huge, huge amounts of that when doing projections on basketball monster, but we're looking at other advanced analytic stats, those teams. Uh, are the other guys that we need to, um, or if you really want to get into yeah, that advanced stuff and creating models, they're the guys that you should be looking to, to contact and connect with and, and chat with about it. Awesome. Um, so you mentioned back when you were in university, uh, I'm sure you mentioned it before. I may not be as keen to it. Uh, 
but what did you do previously and what did you go to university for? What did you study? There'd be a lot of people here who, who do know this, but of course there's always lots of new listeners to, to the podcast throughout every season. So I I was uh, I used to be a pharmacist, so that's what I yeah, studied at university. Wow. Um, so I did that for, oh, I don't know, 13 years or whatever it was and then, uh, and then stopped doing that. And there was about two or three year crossover where I was doing the podcast and the fantasy basketball stuff with being a pharmacist and, and then quit doing that. So I did that for, for quite a long time. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. I had no idea. There you go. So there is, there's um, a bunch of people, like I've talked about it before, but there's a bunch of people who, uh, who are just you know, newer listeners or don't catch that one particular segment where I mentioned that. So yeah, uh, I've got no problem with answering that question multiple times. Cause it is something that I get, get asked at least, you know, 10, 20 times a season, I reckon. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure you do. Yeah. I, uh, I personally started listening a little before this time last year. Okay. So I probably had been said here and there and I just missed it listening to the podcast and class and stuff like that. But, um, so with the, obviously the pickup and pace, the pickup in, you know, three attempts, have you noticed that making any like significant impacts on other categories or any of like the analysis that you all run with basketball monster? What it does is it devalues the bulk three-point shooter. So we had examples of a guy like Clay Thompson, CJ McCollum, who had stretches of being top 20, top 30 fantasy players because they were hitting you know, two and a half to three threes per game. But as more and more players hit to 2.4, 2.7 threes per game, the value of those players, like they're not bumping it up to now hitting four, four and a half threes a game. They're still doing the same thing. So when that was their number one fantasy category and they were doing it when no one else does, much like when I did that 87, 88 recap, the players like Danny Ainge who were hitting a yeah, one three a game was ridiculous compared to everyone else hitting 0.2. But when everyone else starts to catch up, the value of those guys drops off. But the other thing that's tied into that is that with so many more people shooting threes, is that overall field goal percentage has dropped as well uh, across across the league. You know, true shooting percentage is a different measure, but we're not really looking at that in fantasy basketball. So the overall field goal percentage, again, you could look at that from that 87, 88. So many guards shooting 50% from the field where now if they hit 45% overall, like that's really, really strong because of the added value of the three-point shot, whereas back then they were just taking twos. And these guys, you know, most of these guys are still hitting you know, 47 to 52% of their two-pointers. But when you know, 40%, 35%, 50% of your shots are coming from deep, it bumps that field goal percentage category down. So again, the, the value of the threes has been dropped down, but the value of a high field goal percentage guy gets bumped up. Fantastic. Okay, it's very, very interesting. I was curious how that had kind of transcended over the you know the last couple of years when that's been a huge bump in it but um i guess this is probably my final question it's not basketball related but um are australians hoarding toilet paper like us idiot americans yeah we've been i think we we're doing it before you guys it's been really? a, a thing that's been yeah three or four weeks maybe that it's been happening here like toilet paper is getting cleared out of shops for a very long time our all our super well, the supermarkets that i've been to recently there's been no toilet paper the other thing that's been happening as well is the meat section of our supermarkets completely empty. Like actually no meat in the supermarkets as well. I went there the other night. There was no meat at all. There was no bread. There was no onions or potatoes, uh, no toilet paper, no long life milk in the fridge. Uh, trying to think what else, it, it, but it was, yeah, it was crazy, crazy stuff. I don't know why people are hoarding toilet paper. It doesn't make any sense to me. This is not a disease that is making people go to the toilet. And if you need to do it, go and wash your ass in the shower. Like there are plenty of ways around it. We don't need to be hoarding multiple you know, packets and pallets of toilet paper that people are fighting over. It feels pretty crazy to me. Yeah, so it's the first time I've ever gone through one of these things. I won't, I'll won't. i be 21 later next week, and I've never experienced anything like this in my lifetime, even living in hurricane country on the east coast of the United States. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I'm 40 years old, and I've never seen anything like this either. Like just the, the quarantine nature of it, the... Yeah, you know, the 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 fact that you can't travel anywhere, like Europe shut the, shut its borders now for thirty days, or the Australian government's told everybody who's overseas to come home now. Um, it's no no travels recommended. It's 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 pretty wild, and yeah, you know, people would know that I've got a European trip planned in the next forty five days. I've got, I don't think I don't think that's going to go ahead, but who knows? It's just it's a very very strange time. Yeah, I understand that when we just uh, had to cancel our study abroad to Amsterdam and Germany this morning. So it's uh, quite unfortunate events. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I believe that is all I have for you today. Cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Now, uh, 
you are, as you said, you're looking to get into this advanced uh, analytics and t- statistical stuff and, and sports in general. So where can people find you on Twitter if they want to uh, get in contact with you? Yeah, they can find me at Andrew Duggar uh, 4. It's D-U-G-G-E-R. I'm not related to the, the family that's got 19 kids and counting. Uh, but yeah, they can find me there on Twitter uh, as well as they can find me on LinkedIn just by Andrew Duggar, either there, um, anywhere really. It's about the same across the board, so... All right, go and uh, go and check out Andrew over there on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at RedRock underscore Beeble. And make sure you subscribe to this show. You can do that by Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or on Spotify and on YouTube as well. And also, you can tell your smart device to play this podcast or any of the great podcasts across the Locked On Podcast Network. Andrew, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Josh. All right, guys, that will do it for me today. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Say ya. Yeah.